Next.js is a full stack framework. Some people argue, and you know what? Damn right it is, and it is a pretty good one at that. So why am I not using it as such? In the current side project I'm building, I feel like a broken record at this point, I'm using Express.js instead of the built-in Next.js API routes. Josh, why are you doing that? A lot of people asked me, and the answer is for this use case, even if you wanted to use Next.js API routes, you couldn't. You could be sitting screaming and kicking in front of your computer, you just couldn't do it. And there are three things as to why not. To be specific, there are three main limitations of the serverless architecture that Next.js has under the hood. And what serverless means is just instead of hosting a 24-7 server that is always responsible for managing your requests, for example, on Heroku or in DigitalOcean or on a virtual private server that you're hosting, what serverless means is even though the name might suggest there are no servers, there are definitely still servers, but now instead of hosting it all the time, you just pay for the time it takes to execute your functions on someone else's infrastructure. So for example, somebody is calling your Next.js API endpoint, you would be paying Vercel for the two seconds it takes to run that function. And there are three problems with serverless you cannot solve that originate from the very idea of them being serverless. Number one, they time out. You cannot run a serverless function for more than mostly a couple of seconds. For example, I think in AWS Lambda, the default timeout is three seconds, and then you could bump that up to something like 15 minutes. Whereas if you deploy on Vercel, the default execution time is only 10 seconds until the functions timeout. And if you're on the paid pro plan, then I think it's about 30 seconds that you can execute, you can run your function for until they time out. Nothing longer than that can be done. If you wanted to do something with web scraping, for example, that usually takes quite some time because you need to make a request to their server and scrape the information and send it back and so on. So with the timeout, that means you couldn't really do it if it takes longer than 10 seconds on the free plan. Second one, you cannot have stateful connections like WebSockets. What WebSockets are is it's a connection to the server that stays open. It's not one HTTP request and the response. It's a connection that's open all the time. That's what the WSS handshake is for. You cannot have that with serverless because after your function is done running on the server, it's done. You know, the serverless function stops. You cannot keep a connection open to something that is not online all the time, like a serverless function. And what that forces you to do is, instead of being able to handle something in memory on the server, for example, you get a request into one API route, you put that in memory, for example, which clients you're currently serving on your server, you can put that in memory inside of an object in JavaScript on your regular Node.js Express server, and then in another function, also have access to that data. With serverless function, you cannot have stateful connections, which forces you, there's no way around that, to use something external for, for example, in-memory management, something like Redis. And those two points were the main limitations for my app. I need a long time to serve the user because I'm streaming back the response in real time and it takes quite a lot of time, this is a blog article generator, to write a blog article with GPT-4. There's one more disadvantage and that is a cold start problem. You might have heard about this. It means that the first time your function is being called in a certain time interval, be that half an hour or two hours or a day, the first time it's called, the underlying infrastructure that hosts your function needs to first spin up an instance and the first time it's called, that will take way longer than the subsequent requests will. In extreme cases, the function code starts can be up to one or two seconds you have to wait for the first, just the first request that you're making to the endpoint. Especially with Replicate and the open source software, the image to all generator I've built in the past, with Replicate as the underlying provider, those code starts were way more extreme up to, and now sit down, strap yourself in, two minutes. It took up to two minutes for a request to this endpoint to be served, which is absolutely ridiculous and no user will ever stick around that long. But again, this is a very specific issue just with this provider and you won't have that in regular Next.js. If I could, I would have done it with Next.js actually. It's more cost effective because you just pay for the time you actually use 
and it scales way better. You don't really need to worry about infra in the first place, whereas if you host your own Node.js Express server, you kind of do, even though many tools already make it way more easy. For example, Amazon Elastic Compute EC2. You don't have to do too much, but it's just way easier to do it with serverless functions, but I can't. Those are the reasons. I really hope you enjoyed and learned something new, and then I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.